powerful message in that song break every chain break every chain and so listen to that chorus over and over again it's important to know that each one of us have to remember that it's the Holy Spirit that can break the chains that we have been holding on to it's the Holy Spirit that's going to help us to just get rid of the stuff that we hold on to that that's holding us down so let's break every chain not by ourselves we've been doing this thing too long by ourselves but let's rely on the Holy Spirit for the strength that we need and so I'm just so excited about this word today that I want to share with each one of you because I believe that someone here has to break every chain by knowing that God is going to continue to be with us no matter what and so in light of this uh, one of the things that I want to share with you is a great commercial a great great commercial concerning putting on the whole armor of God I really believe that if we're going to put on the whole armor of God it's got to be about the word it must be about the word it's got to be about God it's got to be about God making this thing happen in our lives and so in this I believe that every individual number one can put on the whole armor of God and I found something the other day that had to do with putting on the whole armor of God and I want to share it with you now some may think it's kind of funny in a sense because it is actually off of a movie but this movie I enjoy but listen to the words as you listen and look at this clip finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace in addition to all taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God I thought that would have been a great clip in six putting on the whole armor of God and right now I want to continue that little series that we were doing from yesterday uh, um, yesterday we were talking about the four things that God cannot do we believe that God can do all things am I right we do but in theory we're saying there are four things that God cannot do but before we do that let's pray together and invite God's Holy Spirit into our lives that we can get into this word and then when we leave our homes we can live this word let's pray father again we come before you thanking you for this opportunity to just simply give you everything and now right now we're asking for your word to become um, immediate in our lives and be and so we'll be able to live out the meaning of the word in our lives be with us and bless us in Jesus name amen hey the four things that God cannot do can you remember the two things that we talked about that God cannot do do you remember the two things well if you don't let me help you to remember the first thing is remember that God cannot lie God cannot lie and and we gave you some text yesterday to help you understand that God is not a man that he should lie or the words that he says never comes back void and then I want us to look at the second thing and the second one was he cannot change his law that's right he cannot change his law so number one he cannot lie and number two he cannot change his law he says for I am the Lord and I change not he does not change his law and so I want to talk about the third one and the fourth one so we realize that if someone says God can't do that you can say there's four things God cannot do number one God can't lie number two God doesn't change his law that's right and number three listen to this he cannot justify an unrepentant sinner oh boy 
God cannot justify an unrepentant sinner. If you if you do not ask God for forgiveness, He cannot forgive you, and so He cannot just so you cannot be justified. So today, when you wake up, as you're waking up today, when you leave your home today, when you go on your jobs or if you go to school, remember that if you don't ask for forgiveness, you you walking around with that loom around your life, and and in that God cannot justify an unrepentant sinner. Hey, let's look at some text to prove that. Luke chapter 13 verse 3 says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Hey, I know that's a little bit rough. I know that sounded a little bit rough, but it's true. Okay. And then the second one, Proverbs 28, 9 and also 13. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. Wow, isn't that something? So we find even, even in this that God cannot, he cannot justify an unrepentant sinner. So let me give you a third one. You ready? It says, Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Wow. Okay. And I'm going to give you one more. Romans 2 verse 13 says, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So he cannot, he cannot justify an unrepentant sinner. That just means, listen, God's not just going to come out the blue and say, you know what, I forgive you. He wants to know that you're keeping your end of the covenant and your end of the bargain. So in that, we've got to be repentant for, for the, or we have to repent for the stuff that we've done. So that God will know that we're interested in being in a, in 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 sorry, in alignment with Him, and so that is what we must do. The first one, come on now, God is not a man that He should lie. Then, God cannot change His law, and then here we go, He cannot justify an unrepentant sinner. Let me give you number four. You ready? Number four says He cannot save a man against His will. Wow. He cannot save a man against his will. Listen, it, whenever someone is drowning, this is what I heard because I can't swim. But whenever someone is drowning, the, the only way for that person to be saved is if they give up. Just give up and allow themselves to be saved. Okay? There, there was a man one time that I heard, this was a story that I heard, that he was saving a, a, an individual, but they were struggling so much that he had to hit him and knock him out just to save him because uh, I, I'm because I'm telling you that you God cannot save someone who does not want to be saved so listen again number four he cannot save a man against his will look at this Isaiah 1 18 and 19 says come now and let's reason together said the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And so when we look at this, we realize now that he's telling us to come. Let's reason again. Let's think this through. Because I want to save you. But I can't save you if you don't want to be saved. All right? Number two. Revelation 22, verse 17. We're almost done. It says, And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that's a thirst, let them take the water of life freely. Which, which tells you, you got to come to him. You've got to come to him. He did his part already to save. And he's saying, come to him. And then I want to share just one more with you. Just one more with you. Look here. John 6 verse 37. And John 6 verse 37 says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. What a good God we serve. A God that will not throw us out. A God that will not push us out. But a God that says, come to me. So the four things that God can't do is, God cannot lie. God cannot change his law. God cannot justify and unrepentant sinner and he cannot save a man against his will i want you to know that i believe that god can do anything but in relationship or or as it comes to our relationship with god we must know that god does not change but we know that he loves us so much that he wants us to come to him so that he can save us 
What an amazing God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. Hey, let me share this song with you. And I want to share this song with you because after this, it's so important that we give ourselves to him, letting him know we need him. Not a second. 